When it comes to using geometric shapes in your designs, it's kind of like teamwork. At their core, they are just simple shapes. Some might be more interesting than others, but they are just simple shapes. However, when you put them all together, they can link perfectly and become far more than the sum of their parts. So today, I'm going to show you how to make one. Hello my friends, welcome back to another video. It's Rob here from Button Press Graphics and today I'm going to show you how to make a geometric shape, a bit like this one. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now the first thing we want to do is come over to the file and document properties. And we're going to navigate to the grids tab. Now, I have used grids in a previous tutorial, so if you haven't checked out that video, please feel free to go and check that out before watching this. But for now, we are just going to select the axonometric grid and we're going to hit new. Once we have, we can close out of it. And then you should have something that looks a little bit like this. Now, we're going to use the pen tool for this next part. So we're going to come across to the left toolbar, select the pen tool, and we're going to make sure that snapping is turned on in the top right corner too. Now what we want to do is we want to think in terms of a cube, and a cube has equal length in every single side and edge. That's what makes it a cube. So we're going to work in the same kind of format. What would happen if you link the cubes together? So to begin with, we are going to create a shape that is exactly the length and height that we require. I'm going to go with five dashes. You can choose whatever you like, but you will have to do a little bit of maths to work out how big it is. So that's five dashes down. I'm going to select it there again. And when we come out this way, I want to make sure that it is around 10 to 15 so i'm going to go for 10 on this one 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and then we just have to line the other two sides up and we have something that looks a little bit like that i'm going to change the color just so we can differentiate it a lot easier now this is the long piece so i am going to come vertically down and then I am going to come along this line here but I'm going to do it for 15 blocks 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 then we're going to come up five places again and come all the way back to the start make that a slightly different colour and now we have a really good basis for the rest of the design so what we're going to do now is create the top piece and this time we are going to come from this side all i did there was right click and then select the box at the opposite end so it's easier for me to work out where the lines go one two three four five and then one, two, three, four, five. And again, one, two, three, four, five. And this time, instead of coming across here, we are going to go vertically up until we meet this line, which should look a little bit like that. Now again, we're going to change this Let's make this slightly darker. Just for now, we don't really need to worry about it too much. And that is pretty much all we need the grid for. So we can come to view, page grid, and turn off the page grid. That now leaves us with three shapes that look a little bit like that. Now this next step is probably the easiest of the steps. All we have to do with this is right click and duplicate 
or simply Control Alt and D, Command Alt and D if you are on a Mac. And then once you have got the scaling handles, click again to get the rotation handles up. And while holding Control, simply rotate it around. Now just so you know you are placing these pieces in the right place, all you have to remember is when it comes to these two pieces, this point on one side will always fit on the inner point. So when I put this down, as you can see, it fits perfectly. And now if I was to control Alt D or right click and duplicate, I can create another group of these three shapes. Do the same again. and you have the basis for your design. And just like that, you have made a geometric shape, which is essentially three shapes that when you put them together and rotate them, they fit perfectly to give a really cool design. And now you can go one step further. Instead of just leaving it as is, you can change the color and add shadows too. So I will show you exactly what I mean. When it comes to light and shadow, there will always be one side that gets hit with more light than another. So my default setting inside my brain is always having the light coming from the left. Occasionally, if I think the design needs it, I will make it come from the right. But for the most part, I will always tend to go from the left. So for this one, I'm going to do exactly the same. That means that this piece, and if I hold shift while I'm selecting them, that piece and that piece, these are all facing this way. And the light's coming from there, so we're going to make these a lot lighter. For this, we'll need the fill and stroke menu, so drag out your menus from the right hand side if your fill and stroke is not open already you can find it in the top toolbar right here and if you need the align and distribute menu you can find that one right here by default i have all mine on so with these three selected we're going to go to our fill and stroke menu and once we are there we are going to change the brightness and nothing else So to begin with, we're just going to make it around 50% saturation. I think actually even less than that, uh, we'll go around 30. And then we are going to rinse and repeat with the different views. So this piece is catching more of the light coming from above. But I have the light coming from the side. So I want this to be slightly darker than these but not too dark. So I will show you exactly what I mean. We select all the shapes that are facing upwards and then we are going to lower the brightness and the saturation just so we can get a nice color there. And finally, we take the sides that are getting the least amount of light and we make them very saturated but very dark like so now the reason i have done the light and the shadows already just like that is because it is now far simpler to change the color and now i can individually change each group of shapes into whatever color I would like. So now if we select these pieces, instead of changing all the values on these bottom three bars, we can simply just move it into the color that we want. And say I want this one blue at around 180. I just have to remember that number and then select 180 again. But as you can see, with me selecting these, 
I don't have to worry about selecting which one is lighter. So now I'm going to change the color of the other side pieces. And now just like that, you have a much better design. But to be fair, I think I'm going to just darken this a little bit more. Just so it has more contrast with these side pieces. And there you go. That is how you can make a very simple but effective geometric design. You can go further with this by adding shadows and you can change the colors to whatever you want. In fact, there is quite a lot you can do to this simple group of shapes to make it look really effective. If you found this tutorial helpful, please let me know in the comments and consider hitting that subscribe button if you haven't already. Thank you so much to everybody that is watching and until next time, I'm going to bid you all a fond farewell and see you in the next one.